Welcome back here to Granite Paradise and a brief but educational discussion about what many have dubbed fossil soup. Fossil soup is one of those stones that is common enough that you can likely find some almost anywhere you may be living, or at least nearby. Here we see some very nice oyster shells of some kind from right here where I live, and we are at the foot of the Rocky Mountains in northern Colorado. North of us, in an even more unlikely place for anything related to water, we find the popular lapidary agate variety known as Turritilla agate, found in central Wyoming of all places. This material is very popular among lapidarists and jewelry makers, and here we see a piece that has been tumbled. And it really is amazing for its hardness, the density of the shells, and vibrant white cross sections against a dark background. It makes sense that the general occurrence of fossil soup would be so abundant, since it forms in beach environments and, well, three quarters of the world is covered in oceans currently, and over geologic time and the movement of these oceans, well, that has left a lot of beach deposits around for us to find. Speaking of beaches, these three large, exquisitely decorated cobbles, long after their original home beach passed into history, were eroded out and then collected on a beach on what is now Mexico's Baja Peninsula. The subject of today's video, however, is what would we have left if we could somehow remove the shells from fossil soup? Stick with me today and let's study a stunning specimen from Florida where that's exactly what happened. <laughs> A number of years ago, I was visiting my mom in central Florida and I wanted to do some rock hunting while I was there. There are some good rock collecting locations in the state, but I didn't know of any and judging by the landscape, we were not likely to come upon any huge gravel bars like we see in other areas. Mostly it's a flat karst limestone landscape with the notable sinkholes, underground river systems, a lot of lakes, etc. One thing that is abundant in Florida is fossil soup and many other unique limestone and fossilized coral formations. Be sure to click on the video at the end, by the way, and see Coral Castle, which is an amazing collection of massive and now uniquely eroded limestone structures built by one man in South Florida. My mom and I ended up visiting some landscape supply yards and they all had mountains of fossil soup boulders to adorn people's yards. All of it was a similar rock that you might imagine, limestone with shells all through it. But I came across this piece and immediately knew it was unique. Not only were the fossils themselves of a very attractive elongated snail, but the actual shells were completely gone. Pay attention to the complete absence of the shells and the complexity of the remaining casts and molds. The molds are what most of us imagine when we think of fossils, prints left in the rock. But being elongated snails, these critters had intricate spiral chambers inside their shells which, over the eons, also filled with sediment. With the shells gone, these chambers are now shown as casts, almost appearing as soft, cushiony springs. On Mexico's Gulf Coast, which is a similar environment as Florida, I saw some rocks in which the casts were so free within the rock that you could shake the rocks and hear them bouncing around inside. The Ocala limestone from which this piece originates is from the late Eocene period or about 35 million years old and it's known for being extremely fossiliferous, having formed in a shallow sea environment. Being that limestone is mostly made of the same material as the shells, since it is literally composed of shells, the absence of the shells here raises some questions. There are several related minerals that comprise limestone and similar rocks. Calcite, dolomite, and aragonite to name a few. I imagine that if the conditions are exactly right, one of these dissolves while the other does not. I would appreciate your comments on this question. Please excuse the debris trapped in some of the voids as I do keep this rock outside and it was sold as landscaping rock. 
so we can enjoy it during the warmer months when frost is not an issue. Thanks so much for watching and I look forward to your comments on these questions. Also please share as it really helps out the channel.